Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the Conflict of Nick channel. I'm your host Nick, and this is going to be the next video of the Conflict of Nations every unit in the game tier making list. Um, it's a multi-part series, so stay tuned for every part. Links to previous parts will be down in the description, and links to future parts, if they are already uploaded, will be uploaded in the description later on as well. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to. It really helps me grow. Um, and that's all. Enjoy the video. The first unit we're going to be going over for this video, or just the next unit if you have watched the first one already, is going to be the Corvette. The Corvette is somewhat situational because it is a very um, situational unit as far as water goes. In coastal waters, it does very well. In um, deep waters, not so much. Uh, really, for this unit, I would say it's great for early game, but not so much for mid or late game. Um, and if you have these in the mid to late game, just keep them as defense. And I will tell you why. In the beginning, they're a really good unit to go for right off the bat and to go for engaging enemy uh, units or nations by blockading their coastal nations and bombarding them while they can't do anything and it's also a great unit early on to set up a defensive perimeter around your coastal cities so that you can be a hundred percent safe knowing that you cannot be boarded um, by coastal cities by enemy nations if you're an island and you go for corvettes right away and your uh and your neighbors don't do that chances are you're going to win that entire area over for yourself because of what you have now obviously they don't do too well in late game and mid game because their range is limited they don't do very good they're higher hit points and they require supplies which is an upside and a downside at the same time depending on where your economy stands in the game as a nation but overall i'd say for what they're purpose for as defense and um an attack ship i would say they do really well one corvette can stop the largest army as long as it's on the water that's all you need a ship to do as long as you can't let your enemy get access to your islet or your coastal cities so i would say in the beginning game this is a very good option for that and even late game if your allies if your enemies aren't attacking with ships and just land targets why not still have your corvettes at your cities They'll kill units for free and defend you. I would say these are an easy B tier because in the beginning game, they're so versatile and they're just honestly um, a big piece of closure and security that not many players will probably go for right off the bat. Next up is one of the most popular, and I mean the most popular units in the game. It's going to be the Naval Heavy Cruiser. The cruiser is one of the most popular units in the game as far as naval combat goes because it's purely for anti-ship basically. It has an anti-aircraft circle and it has the largest range early on of most ships. It starts at 75 range which is larger than any other ship besides the naval officer and at level 3 it can get 100 range which is again bigger than any other second tier upgrade besides the naval officer. This ship is great at being a multi-role um, ship because it can damage ships heavily, it can uh, shoot down enemy aircraft, it can damage submarines decently, and it can bombard things really heavily. I think it can do at max level 5 damage to infantry and about 3 or 4 to hard targets. So a 5 stack of these max level can do 25 bombardment damage which is 1 max level infantry's hit points exactly. These things are very versatile for blockading your opponents and for also having in stacks with a naval officer as your damage is going to be boosted heavily. And it's also so popular and so good in my opinion to go for because most people in pub matches are going to be going for surface vessels and not so much submarines. As well as they're going to be going for aircraft that can probably attack your ships. So the enemy, uh, well the anti-aircraft envelope is really good for shooting down aircraft or just dealing damage that you want to deal. Um, and feeling that sense of security knowing you can't just be completely vulnerable to the air like destroyers are The biggest weakness of cruisers is going to be missiles But that doesn't affect them too much because of how good they are I'm going to put cruisers cruisers at an easy S tier right along the submarines By the way, this is a very good strategy, but combined with submarines cruisers and frigates 
one of the deadliest strategies in the game can be accomplished. Next up, we probably have the more popular ship, uh, in pub matches at least, um, it's going to be the Destroyer. The Destroyer is a very situational unit um, because it can do a lot of things, but it's really meant for submarines slash anti-ship warfare, but not so much for anti-ship. Um, one thing it does not get, it does not get um, anti-aircraft. This is the, um, I believe, the only ship besides uh, corvettes that do not get an actual anti-aircraft circle, um, so it does not get an attack there. But this ship leads to cruisers, so most people will end up getting it anyway, but it's very good against subs, it's, very, it's decent against ships, and it can bombard things pretty well. It starts at 50 range, then goes to 75 at level 2, and then 100 at max level. So overall, it's not horrible, but you do not want to have these things stacked in 5 stacks alone, because it will be very vulnerable to naval patrol aircrafts or any ASW warfare um, units. It's going to be vulnerable to basically any aircraft in the game. It'll be outplayed by cruisers and even submarines can hit it very hard if you don't get the first hit in. But destroyers, what I like to use them for is a decent defense past corvettes. Corvettes can be pretty easily overwhelmed if your, na if your opponents actually have a navy and they want to invade you with that navy as well. So destroyers can be a good option, a decent option at least, to defend your cities with the corvettes that you already have because you have to research them anyway if you're going for cruisers. So I would say destroyers are probably going to be a B tier for me because everybody uses them and usually they can get outclassed by other ship classes and strategies but they're a decent overall ship for defense and assaulting and stacking with other ships such as frigates or destroyers. The last surface vessel in our group today is going to be the frigate. Now the frigate is one of my personal favorites because you can get some of the most satisfying anti-aircraft moments in the game with these because they are purely meant for anti-aircraft at max level they are doing a uh, they are doing 10 aircraft damage each so a five stack of max level frigates can do 50 damage to aircraft and 50 defense they also have the highest missile damage um, as far as ships go but i think the aircraft carrier has a little bit more but a five stack of these can have 20 defense against missiles so it's very good for defending your homeland from enemy aircraft like bombers and missiles and also covering your fleet against things like npas and enemy aircraft as well as getting close to enemy airfields to hit enemy aircraft frigates are getting a decent range they're having the same range upgrades as the destroyers and really one of the good things they can also do is locate stealth they can locate um low signature air targets and i believe they can also spot helicopters although i'm not sure on that but i think they can and they do decent against subs, they're not so much um, equipped to deal with ships, but that's why you, these never travel alone. They're always meant to cover bigger ships like cruisers or destroyers, and also submarines. And that's where they shine, because while they can also attack and support, you really want to use these ships to cover your other units, and that's what they do extremely well, because most things, attacks, will come from the air, and if you need to get other hits in, they can do it very well, and they can also have decent bombardment power. I would say I would put these at an easy A tier because of how much of an impact they have in naval combat and how much they can defend your navy from other threats. The next unit we're going to be moving into is going to be the helicopter gunship. Now this is a more common unit you'll see because a lot of people like if they're going to use a helicopter they're going to use the gunship because it's going to be a no-brainer. It's good against infantry. It does what it's meant for and it even does decent against armor. It doesn't do that bad of a damage against armor and a lot of people will not always go for mobile anti-aircraft which means it'll be decent for most situations. Helicopter gunships at max level can also see stealth units on the ground, which means they can see special forces. That means that they're good to have just patrolling around if you want to have them there, and you'll be able to stop special forces from sneaking by because they'll automatically engage and they will do a lot of damage to them because gunships do really well against infantry. I would say these are a really good overall unit because while they don't do 
too much damage to um, armor, they can still do a lot of damage to armor as well because a lot of people will also always have their stacks mixed with infantry to conquer land. And if you can also knock out the infantry in those stacks, you will be able to stop them from even taking land. So I would say these are very good, especially in the Eastern Doctrine. Um, they're very good paired up with a, a rotary ring officer because of how much damage he lets them do. You can get them around 70, 80, even 90 depending on the level of the officer. And usually you'll also just be able to do decent damage to a lot of different things. So I would say these are a very cost effective unit that can do just whatever about you want them to do. I would say these are going to be an A tier because I love using them personally. They're so good at what they do and they just feel like a right choice to put in an A tier. So guys, I really hope you enjoy the video. Um, I am enjoying making this series so far and obviously it's ended up being more parts than I thought it would be, but we've come this far. So guys, if you enjoy the channel or enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out and it's the single biggest thing that helps my channel grow and thrive. If you guys liked the video, leave a like. If you guys disliked it, leave a dislike. And in the comments, if you wanna write why you liked or disliked it, feel free to do so. If you have a question or you just wanna say hi, you can also do that. I try to react and respond to as many as I can and if I haven't yet, I will get to it later. So guys, I hope you have a beautiful day. Stay tuned for the future parts. Nick out.